understanding that you're, this operation is, is still in progress, a uh, basic question that Ukrainians have and the world has is whether these plants are safe while they're under Russian occupation. There were fires burning near the Chernobyl uh, reactors uh, and there's been concern about about both locations. So just on the on the basic safety issue, are you comfortable now with the situation that the maintenance? No, no. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. What I'm doing, Mr. Ignatius. I'm not comfortable. If you ask me today, are these plants safe? Well, in relative terms, yes. Otherwise, the IAEA would have said it in today's report. But the situation is not sustainable like this. And we've had, and you describe them, and in the opening images, we saw some of that. We have had already close calls. We have had situations that, while not being close calls, were quite concerning. Like, for example, the situation regarding the external power lines to Saporizia, which from five went down to two at one point. Now, a third has been repaired, so we are pretty good uh, in that situation. Um, Chernobyl, we had the same situation with power down, then power was... Re so we are dealing with a repetition, a reiteration of events that as a responsible head of the nuclear institution in the world, I must be addressing. I cannot ignore them. I, cannot, I simply cannot ignore them. So uh, this is why I am, I am saying, and perhaps this is uncomfortable for some, we have an issue with the nuclear safety and the security of this installation. Let me mention something else, which we haven't discussed so far, the safeguards side of this. As you know, a country with 15 nuclear reactors, it's a lot of nuclear material out there that is under our control the control of our inspectors. And you have already heard, I'm sure, or seen allegations that some, that perhaps there were intentions or plans to develop nuclear weapons and things like that, which I, I, I dismissed um, when, they were, when they were put forward. But why could I dismiss them? Because I still have the operational um, view as an inspector of what is going on. But if this continues, and if I am not able to perform my safeguard activities as I should, and some of them cannot be performed remotely and require my inspectors to be there, then we will start having loopholes, or we might having loopholes and situations where nuclear material could be unaccounted for, I don't know. And then the big question marks that this conflict is putting to all of us as an international community could multiply. So this is why I'm saying, as the head of the IEA, we should act now before something happens that we will regret. A nuclear accident of nuclear um, uncertainty in terms of what is going on with all of this nuclear material.